bold Stand my ground but give up control Know the boundaries but tear down all the walls Won't give up or give in to apathy Gonna plant a tree then plant a tree So you've been in the space for quite a while. I don't actually know when you started, so I'd like to know that. And and I'd also kind of like you to paint a picture of where permaculture was when you got started and, and where, where it is now and where you see it in 10 years from now uh, from a trend perspective and just your, your, your perspective kind of looking at it as a system globally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's been so many in so many different places in that time. I mean, I took, so I took a permaculture course when I was in college at University of Vermont in like 1990 eight i think so what is, what is it 24 years ago is it or a little less um and you know it was it was known here then i mean at least among people who are into ecological design it was when i was getting into ecological design i took a course with john todd at the, at that school which was really a great exposure and there were pdcs happening in the bullock brothers in the us and penny livingston probably and a whole bunch of other people um, had been doing it for a while at that point out west, um, but it was a lot newer in New England. Um, and then it, I think it's just gained in popularity, like seemingly every year since, or definitely at least maybe in notoriety in the last few years for some people, but has just been getting more and more um, mainstreamed. I mean, I don't think it's still anywhere like it is I've heard in in New Zealand and in Australia and Tasmania, but. Um, it's, I think, more widely known than ever. Although at the same time, I think there's less interest like in permaculture courses now than there was, let's say like five to eight years ago. I feel like when my book came out, you know, we filled three courses, no problem. And now I don't think there's that many interested students out there in general. A lot of courses that used to run no longer run. There's been a nice kind of culling, I think, of like just maybe a lot of extra um, content that that was out there um but it seems like people are are um, doing so many great things in so many different parts of of the permaculture space and um yeah it's nice to see see it mature i mean i'm mostly interested especially in like what's going on on the sites you know what's like real and also you know in the social pieces that's a little harder to follow and to to kind of know what's really happening but um yeah. What what was that? I feel like there was another part of your question. Well, where do you think. see it going in ten yeah. years? I mean, how is it evolving? And I mean, you don't just teach; you also are consulting. I think for yeah, for, you've got some pretty big projects. I'd like to ask you about in a second. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, that's a bit of a barometer as well in terms of mm-hmm. the types of projects. Not I mean, your career would also kind of dictate the kind of projects you're working on like earlier in your career you were probably on smaller things and now you've kind of matured into these larger projects mm-hmm. but but certainly you would probably have a sense of where and the types of people that are are kind of engaging you now and mm-hmm. uh, I'm just curious how yeah. that how that's worked for you well I'm not sure exactly where permaculture is going I mean I, I it's hard for me to, to even caution a guess about that, I think in some ways. Um, But I would want to say and should say that when I got into it, um, I I could have gotten into it earlier and not been met with that much success because I think like the culture wasn't there as as much as it wasn't as ready for, um, for, you know, what it was ready for. when I started to do my work more um so yeah you know timing is so is is kind of everything and I remember walking through our site early on with like some folks like Dave Jackie and some kind of veterans and you know having a conversation about that uh, was kind of interesting and also difficult I think um for people who are really ahead of the curve that's tough for for those people um yeah, I don't know where it's going. I mean, I hope it, it just um, the, the principles get picked up in all spheres and people don't get too attached to the strategies and to the prescriptions or to the people like in it, you know, to the to the personalities or to the specifics, but but really focus on the principles and 
um, and it doesn't get kind of um, chewed up like so many things and watered down and turned into like just like um, yeah like a personality things or, or yeah like focusing on the extraneous parts which is like let's say the, the people who practice permaculture or the stri or the strategies and the, and the techniques versus the principles which apply to everyone everywhere how do we how do we make sure that that happens i think well for those of us who teach like like all of us here it seems um we can remind our students about that and and um you know not um like not feed into that and r remind um yeah just remind students like uh, about the the difference there and and parse those things and not like play up um certain techniques um or give them yeah just kind of give them an overemphasis um and yeah just really i think be like vigilant about like context being everything and um and the principles being foremost rather than just what it might look like for one person somewhere that looks really cool and amazing um, and how it can be happening in just as an amazing of a way somewhere else where it's not as visible, um, where it's maybe not as spectacular or dramatic. Um, so maybe, you know, people like us, I know, you know, personally, I'm speaking for myself, like shining a light on some of those, those other ways that it's happening more, you know, would be good. Kind of yeah, and, and one of the things that I've, I mean, I think every, all of the presenters that we've had on, including yourself, one of the things that they've, that they've done is they've highlighted their failures almost as much as they've highlighted their successes without even, like, that was one of the questions we kind of have, but we haven't had to ask it because, <laughs> you know, half the slides are basically here, don't do this, here's where I was wrong. And I think those cautionary tales um, are also a great, you know, way to, like you said, shine a light on how like if you just try to, um, you know, copy somebody else's prescription, like there's going to be side effects to that. And, uh, and those side effects can be disastrous in terms of, you know, money and time lost and, you know, you know negative impacts on your quality of life. Um, and, and that uh, I know in, in a lot of kind of, I think particularly in agriculture, um, I mean, it's so easy to just, you know, have a photo of like, you know, you can crop out all the bad shit and just have, you know, that one beautiful shot, shot of the image and nobody gets to see all the other stuff. And, and so there's this, this image that it's, it's, it's easy and it always works. Uh, and so I know I've, I mean, when I was really, really starting out, I, uh, whenever I failed, it was like, I couldn't talk to anybody out about it because I, it was, you know, I must be doing something wrong because everybody else is, doesn't make any mistakes. And so I, I really appreciate that from, from, you know, guys like you and, and the other folks we've had on today. Yeah. It, it means you need to try a lot too. I mean, I think that people have succeeded in any space, any field way beyond permaculture, every, every single thing out there, they've, it's, it's, it's a common refrain, you know, there's great quotes about it, but, but those, those are people who have just failed more times <laughs> at more things than everyone else. Cause they're just, they're just yeah. doing more iterations. Being a soul, believing anything is possible.